हेलो एंड वेलकम डियर व्यूअर्स टू द अनदर इंफॉर्मेटिव टॉपिक ऑन टोटल नाइट्रोसेमाइन इम्प्यूरिटी सो नाइट्रोसेमाइन इज अ टॉपिक ऑफ ग्रेट इंटरेस्ट नाउ अडेज इन द फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री बिकॉज नाइट्रोसेमाइन इम्प्यूरिटीज आर द इम्प्यूरिटीज विच आर कार्सिनोजेनिक इन नेचर ब्यूटाजेनिक एंड जेनोटॉक्सिक इन नेचर that's why many of the formulations got withdrawn from the market due to the finding that this product contain nitrosamine so in this video mainly we will discuss about the limits for total nitrosamine impurities and now we will see the basics of nitrosamine impurities and their classification so that you will understand the topic in detail nitrosamine and nitrosamine impurities are potent genotoxic compound and are possible human carcinogens that's why these are very toxic in nature and these are treated as port of concern as per the ICH M7 guideline port of concern means these are the potent mutagenic impurities these are carcinogenic and may cause the genetic mutation that is changes in the genetic information and carcinogenic that means the exposure to these nitrosamine impurities can lead to cancer then these nitrosamines are classified on the basis of their chemistry as small nitrosamine and complex nitrosamines nitrosamines are the chemical compounds or impurities with general structure of uh, nno this is the generalized structure uh, shown here this is the nitroso group attached here small nitrosamines are mostly originated from the synthesis route and the complex nitrosamines or these have the bigger structure or bigger molecular weight these are the drug substance related impurities these are also known as ntsris so chemical structure of seven potential nitrosamine impurities in the apis and the drug product is given by the us fda guideline these are ndma ndea nmpa ndipa nipa ndba nmba and their respective ai limit acceptable daily intake is given in nanogram per day these small nitrosamines originate from the synthesis route so 96 nanogram per day is the highest uh, ai limit while the most potent uh, ai limit the ai limit for most potent nitrosamines is 26.5 nanogram per day now see how much potent these nitrosamine impurities are their limit is in nanogram per day the ai limit is a daily exposure of a compound such as ndma ndea nmba nmpa ni pa and the ndipa that approximates 1 in 1 lakh cancer risk after 70 years of exposure so after 70 years of exposure to the impurity there are chances of one cancer incidence in 1 lakh species so from there these ai limits are taken or calculated or derived appendix b includes the description of ai derivation of ndma which is example of how fda applied ich m7 to the to the setting for the limits so if you go to the guideline from us fda you can find these calculations and the basics the conversion of ai limit into ppm varies by product and is calculated based on the drug's maximum daily dose that is mdd as reflected in the drug label that is ppm is equal to ai in nanogram divided by mdd that is maximum daily dose in mg these limits are applicable only if the product contains single nitrosamines if more than one nitrosamine impurities are identified in the table above and is detected and the total quantity of the nitrosamine impurities exceeds 26.5 nanogram per day that is the limit of most potent nitrosamine based on the maximum daily dose mdd the manufacturer should contact the agency for evaluation for drug products with an mdd of less than 880 mg per day 880 mg per day a recommended limit of total nitrosamine of 0.03 ppm is not more than 26.5 nanogram per day is considered acceptable so this is very simple to understand that 
if the product contains more than one nitrosamine as per US FDA then the limit of most potent nitrosamine impurity that is 26.5 nanogram per day can be given directly if the applicant has concerns so applicant can contact the agency for evaluation and suggestions so based on the maximum daily dose nitrosamine limit for total nitrosamine impurity is 0.03 ppm and is not more than 26.5 nanogram per day so here is the calculation ai in ng divided by mdd in mg so 26.5880 mg it will give 0.03 ppm this is for your understanding that how this 03 ppm 0.03 ppm came from so this is the calculation now nitrosamine limits for drug products with mdd above as we have seen for 880 mg daily intake the nitrosamine should be adjusted so that not to exceed the recommended limit of 26.5 nanogram per day and this 26.5 nanogram per day is the limit of most potent nitrosamine impurity and that is derived from the calculation and the principles given in m7 guideline ICH M7 guideline for mutagenic impurities and this concentration is derived as 1 in 1 lakh species principle. If nitrosamine without published AI limits are found in the drug products, manufacturers should use the approach outlined in M7 R1 to determine the risk associated with the nitrosamine and contact the agency about the acceptability of the proposed limit. So, if you found that there is a new type, new impurity type, which is nitrosamine impurity, and it is not published anywhere. It is completely new for the applicant and in the product. Then MCH ICH guideline M7 can be taken into consideration for deciding the limit. Then complex nitrosamines. These are called as NDSRIs. And NDSRIs are the subcategory of nitrosamine impurities that share the structural similarity to the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is API in the drug product typically lack compound specific mutagenicity and carcinogenicity data to inform safety assessments. So the read across approach and SAR approach structural activity relationship approach is taken into consideration for determining the limits for these NDSRIs. And these are the API like structures. The example is N nitroso bupropion, N nitroso sinacalcid, N nitroso sertalin, N nitroso desmethyl amlo, tryptan. So these have the AI limits of uh, starting from highest AI limit of 1500 nanogram, then 400 nanogram, 100 nanogram and 26.5 nanogram per day if you can see here this is the limit of most potent nitrosamine while this is the limit of as per the mc uh, m7 guideline this is the limit of 1.5 mu g per day so if you correlate these things you will get the better clarity so please read ich m7 guideline and from there you can find these values and have better understanding. So the NDSRI is categorized as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 category with the respective AI limit of 26.5 nanogram per day, 100 nanogram per day, 400 nanogram per day, 1500 nanogram per day, and 1500 nanogram per day. So category 4 and 5 have the same AI values. Now, for determining limits in case of presence of more than one nitrosamine, two approaches are considered acceptable. In order to exceed the, in order not to exceed the acceptable risk level of one in one lakh species as outlined in ICH M7 guideline. So the simple, simple, very simple meaning of this sentence is, whatever the number of nitrosamines are there in the product, suppose two nitrosamines, three nitrosamines, four nitrosamines, but nitrosamines are potent carcinogens. That's why you cannot or should not assign the limit which exceed the 1 in 1 lakh principle as outlined in ICHM7. This is very important to know. The total daily intake of all identified nitrosamine not to exceed the AI of most potent nitrosamine 
impurity identified or the total risk level calculated for all identified nitrosamines not to exceed 1 in 1 lakh species. That means there is a chance of developing a tumor in one species out of 1 lakh species. So that much level should be there. That much specified level should be there which will be a specification for the total nitrosamine impurities. If one nitrosamine impurity is there, it will have, if, and if it is identified, it will have a specific compound specific nitrosamine limit. If it is unidentified, it will have or should have the limit of most potent nitrosamine. But if there are multiple nitrosamine impurities, then also there should not be the limit which exceeds the 1 in 1 lakh level of risk as outlined in ICHM7 guideline. That means, once again I will elaborate here, if 2, 3, 4 nitrosamine impurities are there, so all nitrosamine will not have individual specified limit. These will have the limit of risk level of 1 in 1 lakh species. Like the most potent nitrosamine limit is having a AI limit of 26.5 nanogram per day. If you refer FDS control of nitrosamine impurities guideline, then you will find that based on the MDD, uh, the US FDA has given the limits of 0 0.3, 0 0.03 ppm and is not more than 26.5 nanogram per day for drug products with MDD of 880 and if the product MDD is above 880 then the limit of total nitrosamine should be adjusted so as not to exceed the recommended limit of 26.5 nanogram per day and why this 26.5 nanogram per day is coming repeatedly because this is the limit calculated from the acceptable risk level of 1 in 1 lakh species as outlined in ICH M7 guideline. Now as per EM, EMA that is European Medicine Agency, the different options are given and which are very very important to understand. The three options are given, option 1, option 2, option 2 flexible. Two options are given and out of these two options, option 1, option 2 fixed and option 2 flexible. So, these total options will become three options or you can consider it as two options only with option 2 fixed and option 2 flexible. It is considered that the presence of more than uh, one nitrosamine at above 10% of their respective AI constitutes a negligible toxicological risk and as such they do not need any specification. So, if you have multiple nitrosamines in the product but still these nitrosamines are not exceeding the 10 percent of the respective AI that means these are very negligible and these constitutes a negligible toxicological risk so that time there is no need of specification if nitrosamine are present below 10% of their respective AI, you do not need to be factored into a calculation of limit for individual or total nitrosamines. If results are at or above 10% of their respective AI, that is acceptable intake, you can consider the multiple approaches given in the EMA guidance. So, either option 1, 2, fixed and option 2, flexible can be taken into consideration. So, these are the options. here. In option 1, as we have seen, the impurities does not exceed the 10% of the AI limit and that is why the specification is not required. Then in option 2, fixed, that is example is given as 80-20 ratio or 20-80 ratio for the impurities. Then flexible, you can assign the flexible ratio and the total should not exceed the 100 percent. So, we will see that. Now, see in option 2 fixed, fixed approach, fixed AI limits in 
PPM, PPB are set for individual nitrosamines and no limit for total N nitrosamine is needed. The limit for each nitrosamine should be set as a percentage of its AI limit such that the sum of the percent AI limit for each specified nitrosamine does not exceed 100%. So here the limit is given as the ratio and total impurity is not needed, specification is not required because the 100% is adjusted into the ratios. Then the flexible approach. Each N nitrosamine should be specified at its AI limit in PPM, PPB and an additional limit for total N nitrosamine is required. The calculation for total nitrosamine should be written as. So this is the calculation where this XI is the amount of each single nitrosamine in PPM and AI I is the AI limit for N nitrosamine I in the PPM level. So for each batch to determine whether the limit for total N nitrosamine is met, the amount of each N nitrosamine present in PPM or PPB level should be converted into percentage of its respective AI limit. So percentage conversion is there with respect to the AI limit. The sum of percent AI limits of specified N nitrosamine should not exceed the 100%. So here also the not more than 100% total impurity limit is required. So in option 1, Individual is not individual impurity limit is not required, but total is required. And in option two, fixed individual is required, but total is not required. And in option two, flexible individual and also the total impurity limit is required to be specified. Now, as an elaborative example of control option and specification for multiple nitrosamine in the same finished product can be seen as. In case there are two nitrosamines and two nitrosamines both are at or above 10% of their respective AI. Example NDMA and NDA are both detected and are at or above 10% of their respective AI in a finished product with maximum daily dose of 10, maximum daily dose of 300 mg. So how to calculate the AI limit? NDEA 26.5 nanogram per day divided by 300 mg per day. So it will give you in the PPM and PPB level and it is the most potent nitrosamine. 88 parts per million for NDEA. Then for NDMA it will give you 320 parts per billion and specification possibilities for different control options will be like 64 PPB. 70 ppb for this ratio in the option to fixed and in option to flexible 320 ppb and 88 ppb. So this will give you the 100%. Here 20%, here 0.80%, that is 0.8 and 0.2, it will give 100%. Here it is, uh, here the total nitrosamine is not given, but here in this 320. 88 ppb and the total nitrosamine is given as 100%. So this is the calculation for percentage NDMA ppb NDEA ppb divided by this into 100 is equal to 100%. And not more than 100% will give you as I have discussed earlier as a risk of theoretical risk of can cancer in 1 in 1 lakh species. For option 2 fixed approach, the ratio of 20% NDMA to 80% NDEA, that is 20, it is used as an example only here. Different ratios can be used in different situations dependent on the relative amounts present. But here, provided that the sum of the percent AI limits for each specified nitrosamine does not exceed the 100%. So here, the applicant have the option for changing the ratio as per the uh, results obtained from the analysis. If 
for ndma the results are not 20% but 30% so here 30% here 20% can be made but the total should not exceed the 100% cancer risk of theoretical cancer risk in 1 in 1 lakh species then the example of uh, presentation of acceptable batch result for each control option model data from one batch ndma found 38 ppb nda found at 44 parts per billion that is ppb so here is the table given as per this table the limits are given so the total impurity limits for the nitrosamine impurity are given as per the current guidelines and we need to understand that as these guidelines are getting updated uh, many of the times so we have to be very uh, up to date with these guidelines many times the new nitrosamines impurities are getting uh, uh, evaluated and their uh, respective ai limits are uh, being pub published by the uh, regulatory bodies but the total impurity limit for nitrosamine has some basic concept which we have seen as per the usfd and the ema and this can be taken into consideration while giving the impurity limit for total nitrosamine impurities so one thing here is very important to understand that the total impurity limits are to be designed in such a way that the product should not increase the risk of cancer in the patients above that the ICH M7 guideline that is 1 in 1 lakh species. So that is the very much important point out of this video. Keep watching these videos repeatedly, repeatedly so that you can understand the things and have a good knowledge about the nitrosamine impurities and other uh, related concepts. Keep watching the Pharma Learning in-depth channel videos and share with your friends. Thanks for your support for uh, me and for my exercise to make the videos. I am very happy to see the response from the viewers. Thank you.